See, ain't no time to lean on, man. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. You hear me? Yeah! It's not about where I'm from. I was made in the ghetto. Always made in the ghetto. Gotta sleep with one hour. All right, so we got uh, Nino off the porch with us today. Yes, How you feeling, man? Man, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed, man. How you feeling, me, brother? I'm feeling great, man. Appreciate you asking. Appreciate you coming by as well, man. Man, I appreciate you allowing me. You did. Yeah. Yes, sir. So let's take it back, man. Uh, originally from New Orleans, right? Yes, sir. What part of the city did you grow up in? Well, I'm a seven well hard head. Yeah, yeah. No, we were right talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that one by. He talking about one by. Yeah. He's from the seven well. For the reason one by. Yeah. Fisher Project, Mike. You know me. You know I'm slapping shit. <laughs> How rough was it growing up there? Man. I was in elementary school. I seen my first nigga get body. I seen the police standoff because our elementary school was right there by the projects. You hear me? Man, I seen the police standoff and a nigga in the projects with a rocket launcher, nigga. I'm talking about nigga got a rocket launcher. He on the second floor, like, I'm talking about, yeah, this boy up there with the yeah, you hear me? For real, for real type shit. Then I seen a nigga, like, he, he, nigga had, a, he already got fucked up in the projects, you feel me? He ran into the school. For help, you feel me? So he went up to the gate and shit like that. Nah, we, we coming out the lunch room and shit, you hear me? We see him, he, he at our feet, like he grabbing on my feet, like, hmm. man, we need to help me type shit, you feel me? Security come out, uh, security guard come out that bitch, fire that nigga up. Ba, 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 ba. He asked him for help though. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it, I guess it's just cause he was on school property, whatever, whatever, whatever. Hmm. And he wouldn't let me go. They fire his ass up. Yeah. I'm a real New Orleans baby. I'm talking about Folk Katrina. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, no mixed shit. Folk Katrina, like, before all that other shit. Like, I'm so New Orleans, I swear to God, until I moved, when I moved to Florida and I seen Mexicans and stuff, I was like, what the fuck type people is that? <laughs> I swear, man, yeah. we in the project. The only thing I knew about were white people. Black people and Chinese people because we bought our crawfish from them. That's how New Orleans I am. So project, I ain't know nothing about no other type of person until I stepped out of the projects. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, crazy, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Yeah, you talked about being exposed to the violence in New Orleans at such a young age. Why do you think there is so much violence out there? But, not even that. It's more so it's a thriving and bugging mentality, but it's more so because we we smile. Like, we smile. So the only thing you got is like, just that. You feel me? Like, when you go, okay, like, when you come, come into Atlanta, it seems like being on the east side, it seemed more, it's slummy over there because they, they ain't got too much, you feel me? But when you step into the city, like on the west end where I stay at, you feel me? Where I move around that, you feel me? You like, you see, it's a whole lot more people, it's a lot more traffic, you feel me? Oh, uh, you got a lot more way to make money, but over here on the east side, zone six, them niggas, them niggas, them niggas look a little bit more dirtier because they got they got to do a little bit more. You feel me? These niggas got to knock a head off because it's not too much traffic coming as much over there. You feel me? Like they they live a little bit more slummier. I don't know. So I've been in Louisiana. We live slummy. Everybody lives slummy. So it's, it's no different on no side of town. Everybody just lives slummy. You know what I mean? You go to the fish, you go to the 17th, you can go they to the night like wall. Them. You can go everywhere. Everybody just lives slummy. So you can't even, oh, we, you come from them slums, you can't even come over there. We're going to knock your head off. You know what I mean? Like, that's how, yeah. it's just it, that mentality there. Uh, and we train. We, like, we train for that. Like literally, like I remember being a little a uh, 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 little kid walking through the projects, and they'd be like, uh, "Nigga, stop, stop scraping your heels." You feel me? Like, 
Nah, nigga, walk with your chest out. You feel me? Nah, like, I'm talking about nine. A nigga put a gun in my hand. Shoot at a nigga. You feel me? Like, they do shit like that. They We trained to be this way. Nigga, I was nine, and my 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 baby sister, uh, daddy, nigga, that nigga, that's how I started smoking weed. Hmm. A nine? Hit this on Thanksgiving Day. Hmm. Hit this. You're... And so, they won't like that. Yeah. He did it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Hit this on my fuck you up. <laughs> like, type shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, real nigga shit. That's how it went. We trained to be this way. We trained. Mm. So, how old were you when you moved to Florida then? When I moved to Florida, I think I was like 14. Cause I had caught like a little 10 murder charge. At 14? For, no, like 12. 12? Yeah, we were doing some other shit. We were really part of the G. Yeah, damn, there's some other shit. It started tripping out. Got them spazzed out. And I ain't like I probably like the the little two year span in, in Louisiana is a little two year span. Do the little not guilty shit, you feel me? Some no evidence, whatever. Yeah, let me go. Then turn around. My mama, my mama, like she she won't go into that shit. <laughs> I ain't really tripping out. So my mama took me. She took him. Right damn, cause he always been like right up under me, like. That sibling that's just like right there, you feel me? Just follow me, do everything. Took me and she took him and she was like, Yeah, yeah, I gotta go. So yeah, we we went to Florida about fourteen. He was about what, nine, ten. What part of Florida did you guys go to? Tampa. Tampa. Oh shit. Sure. Yeah. Oh. We was everywhere though. We was them little kids. We used to make the news, goddamn. We used to be running around Tampa selling the M and M's and shit. Yeah, nigga, the M and M baby. I'm the M and M child. We the M and M child. We the ones that was on the news, goddamn, man, in Florida, goddamn. I'm so, talking about for selling the M and M, doing all that solicitation. You know, the police, they got the they got the news channel chasing us, all that. You know hear I me? Mean? I'm talking about news channel popping out the bushes and everything. You know hear I me? Mean? All that way. <laughs> We all at what? Oh, right, deeper life Christian church. Go look it up. I'm talking about come to find out the motherfucking pastors that we we tell them the candy for and shit like that. Man, they using this shit to flip cocaine for real. They these motherfuckers, man. Go look them up. They, the what they call the brothers of Tampa or some shit like that. These niggas, Pastor Jimmy, all of them. These niggas been got locked up for trafficking cocaine. <laughs> yeah, man. These niggas big rich off of we do. I'm talking about so much money for I'm talking about two, three thousand. Now we gonna hit the Buccaneers games, all of that shit, man. What we tearing people up a day. I'm talking about we running through like twelve cases of M and M's in one day. <laughs> no cap. Twelve cases. I'm talking about cases. It's four. It's four boxes. Four forty eight count boxes in the in the uh in the case. Yeah. We running through them bitches a day. Well, I used to sell so many boxes of candy, you could kind of still see. My wrist was turning black. Nigga, like, I used to be walking around with the boxes like this. Nigga, the water boys that you see in Atlanta, we was them before them, I swear. Nigga, we been on this. Yeah, I'm talking about what? (laughs) Been on this straight, dumb, retarded. Yeah, I'm telling you. Nigga been hustling since before hustling, man. You ain't got to be a dope boy to have money. So when did you relocate the here in Atlanta? Mm. I almost caught a human trafficking charge. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> you almost catch a human yeah, trafficking. Yeah, because them bitches. Them bitches. Yeah, we, yeah. Them bitches tried to set me up. And them pussy ass police was so mad that they couldn't do nothing to me, man. They took my shoes off my feet, sir. It sent me out the fucking investigator center with no shoes, man. Cause they could, they were two bitches. You feel me? And it was just some stupid shit. You feel me? Yeah, but, uh, after that, I came to Atlanta. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna go full fledged with the music. I can't fuck with this shit. They were my homegirls, but they got caught up and the police just wanted me to be involved so bad. You feel hmm. me? Cause I'm there why they getting caught up. You feel me? That shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you start out as a producer, an engineer, or? I started out 
making music. Okay. Me making music. I only ended up engineering and producing and stuff because I figured out it get me in doors that people would normally be in. Like, so I started, I started getting, like, I record myself, learn some new shit. You feel me? And then I started telling niggas I knew how to record. <laughs> I started charging it. I'm charging niggas two, three hundred dollars. Nick sound like some bullshit. Straight bullshit. You ain't shit, but I know how to record it. You ain't saying so I'm in the studio, you feel me? On that. Like I get to do what I want, you feel me? Like I got in this dough though, you feel me? Regardless of whether she's like bullshit, I'm here, you feel me? And eventually me me just bullshitting around turned into me actually knowing how to do this shit. You feel me? Mm. I've always been musically inclined. God damn, me, my whole family, like, it's just musical. Juvenile, that's my cousin. Oh, yeah. High boy, Juvenile. My okay. Cousin. God damn. When I was younger, God damn, my uncle, my uncle, when they, I went to Florida where he would make beats for them. When they first popped off and stuff like that, yeah, make beats for them. I was standing right there when they shooting uh, back that ass up and shit like that. Hmm. Outside, we watching all that shit in the movie. Yeah, yeah, man. Goddamn rodeo, goddamn. We've been around for a, long, a lot of shit. You hear me? I'm a baby when it's going down. And and know you, yeah, and know you. Goddamn, I think that either that was annoy or deny. When we was, I think that was when we was standing the bill. Yeah, but yeah. it just, it started out like just me making music. They're recording in the kitchen and shit like that. Cause my uncle, I just sit, I used to sit and watch him do it, but he had never let me go in the studio. <laughs> you feel me? Like he had never. But yeah. well, I understand why a guy used to have these long drug out ass song, these verses. You know, that's when Wayne used to have them long ass verses. That's my favorite rapper. Like I record a Wayne verse for you, beginning to end. Yeah. You hear me? God damn. I used to write like Wayne. Hmm. Song be seven minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> seven minutes long song, man. Goddamn. But eventually when I got when I got by myself, goddamn, my mama had fuck around because my uncle had started dodging my mama when she had wanted to come get us back and shit, you feel me? So goddamn, my mama fuck around and found us. Uh, we found our mom. And one day my uncle got my mama popped up, got us out of school and shit. We done went to the house. My uncle on there. Hmm. I stole my uncle's computer. <laughs> <laughs> I stole Fruity Loops. Goddamn, I stole what it was called, Able Time Live. Hmm. Goddamn. It was Fruity Loops 2. 2. <laughs> 2. Goddamn. And I started making my beats, learning how to like teach myself how to make the beats. And I was recording my music on Fruity Loops. Oh shit. And Reaper. Goddamn, and Reaper. Mix craft. Oh yeah. Who's dumbing it out? Yeah, goddamn in the kitchen. Hmm. Goddamn, I stole the mic from my uncle. <laughs> I stole. <laughs> All right, then, oh, yeah. Got the whole setup from him. I got a whole list set up from his ass. Man, he did us dirty, though. I had to. I had to. That nigga owed me his life. You hear me? I had to. Right there. He lucky I only took that. Still, now today. Yeah, I say that on camera. You lucky, nigga. Anyway, um, yeah. Right now, but, uh, yep. And that's just how I started. I, and I, like I said, just seeing that I really learned how to do it. Oh, now I don't record it. Trouble. I don't record it. Eastside Jody. I don't record it. Goddamn. Young boy when he was a baby. Goddamn. Uh, we're really mixed most of that shit. Goddamn. Got, uh, just ties. You feel me? My boy Zilla, the one that's on the way, he on TBG. Like, hmm. with Fredo Bang and all of them. Like, I got tired. I've been doing this shit for a minute. My partner Wacko introduced me to him. Rest in peace, Wacko. You heard me? Like, yeah, that's what that is. Hmm. I spent a lot of money coming to see you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got the <laughs> tattoo. Put myself in some pain, brother. 
some pain. I wanted to make this. That's some fresh ink, huh? Hey, you know, this was last night. Last night. Last night. Yeah, I wanted to make this memorable because DGB name is yes. first one was lady. <laughs> you did. So how'd you link up with TBG at first? My partner Wacko, like he, I met him through my partner No, like like some years ago, and Wacko just used to he he had called me and he be like, bro. We don't know each other, but your music so far it motivated me. Like I wake up listening to early mornings every day. Like I got a song, I be like, I be having early mornings and late night. Little baby, I can't sleep until I get this cheddar up. I be having, like so it goes some shit like that. You feel me? I be freestyling, so a lot of my songs I don't even know right there. But it go like that man used to call me, bro. I, I just want to hit this little, yeah, man, and that shit got me feeling, you feel me? Yeah, I, you, like he was just fucking with me, you feel me? And my partner Yates, that's his little home, you feel me? He's either TPG shit, that's family, you feel me? Goddamn, that's his little home, and he played them for him, and he was like, yeah, he is, <laughs> you feel me? Like, yeah, he is, so he got them, fuck around and contact bruh and Yates, stay in Atlanta, you feel me? Yeats pulled right up on me. I'm talking about Fondo. Put me in this car tonight. That, that same night, we went to the 12. Talk business. Huh. Yeah. We was on what? The tw- we was on what? 29th flow? Shit like that. Well, up there, though. Best feeling in the world. All right, damn. And ever since then, it's just been like, yeah, I got I to gotta keep four friends. Then with my partner, Wack guy, like, it's just, yeah, now nah, I gotta, I really like, I really just stay tuned in with him now, you feel me? Because Wack did that bridge, so it can't never be undone, you feel me? So how'd you link up with Rollo and Fan America? Rollo, Jill, man, Young Ralph. Okay. Young Ralph bought him in uh, the studio, the Bat Cave. We had a studio in the Bat Cave, goddamn, and Rollo and what Gunna was shooting the video. It was uh what video? What song was it? It was Rollo and Gunna. They were shooting the video in our studio. Goddamn and Ralph, me and Ralph got like a whole tape actually out, live mixtapes and shit like that. Goddamn, and then we got some music, some unreleased music too. But uh, like Ralph told him like him and then another videographer. I forget my boy name. Stacks. Goddamn, and they, Stacks is Muslim. Mm-hmm. Goddamn, Stacks went out there and he told me, man, you gotta come hit my boy. You gotta come hit my boy. Like, goddamn, he got this song, he got this shit, it's called Prosper. Goddamn. So Rallo came, he bought uh, about 50 niggas in the room. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Nigga, all these niggas got chops. I got this motherfucking little ass Glock, goddamn. This bitch ain't shooting nothing about 12, 13 niggas. You got 15 niggas in here. I don't know. And at this point, like, I'm only knowing Rollo from the little baby videos and shit like that. You feel me? I'm looking at these niggas like, man, yes, I'm balling. Them niggas could have stayed out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they could have really stayed out there. You know what I mean? But, uh, you bring them niggas in there, but he start playing machine and shit. And Rollo, like, man, you know, like, Fuck with me, you feel me? He didn't got it. Right there, my Instagram, Rollo come hopping camera and shit like that. You feel me? He didn't went up with me on my camera and shit like that. And from then, I didn't link. He gave me his number right there. Cause he was supposed to get on that song. But then that shit happened afterwards. You feel me? But he gave me his number. I texted him. The shit happened like two days later. Oh, wow. Goddamn. And then like, uh, probably like, I give it like, it's how God worked. My partner, True Flame, Free True Flame, goddamn, he introduced me to my partner, King. Cause I would record, that's when I was just recording. I was selling my CDs and I met True while I was selling my CDs. Yeah, I still do that too, you hear me? Yeah, who's the CD boy? <laughs> this is what the CD boy did. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, he said, CD boy, $5. But then he got taking donations for his CDs, you hear me? A dollar for his CD. Goddamn. I met True, selling my CDs. True was like, bro, you know how to record? I'm like, yeah, you feel me? And I was still promoting and recording this shit too at the same time because I'm still just moving to Atlanta. So I'm trying to give a feed in 
and meet people and shit like that. You feel me? Record, start recording. True, King come around. He own part of America too. You feel me? Goddamn, I start recording King. Goddamn. And then King Hard too. You hear me? Start recording this nigga King, goddamn. And me and King just locked in after that. Like, we've been locked in for like four years now. You feel me? Yeah. And just like the whole thing, America. The America Ball, the King of the West Side. I recorded that whole thing, all of that stuff like that. I, like, I've been locked in with all of them. You feel me? Like, just meeting people. And they just, they've been putting me around the whole Atlanta. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So how'd you end up uh, songwriting for YK Osiris? The Bat K. Okay. My partner, Tony. Tony, right there, we used to bring Osiris down here. And Osiris used to come to the studio and shit like that, listening to and listen to our shit like that. Fuck around. One day we get in the studio. And they like, oh yeah, uh, he hard. Like he telling his daddy I'm hard because his daddy was really on some. Mm. Yeah, you feel me? Like uh, his daddy always had that demeanor though. You feel me? Like uh, he be on the yeah shit. You feel me? But uh, Osiris telling him, yeah, he hard. You feel me? Like we got to do some shit with him, whatever, whatever, whatever. You feel me? So we just locked in like that, like just being in the studio and whatever, whatever, whatever. But yeah, we brought him out here. We brought him out here. Atlanta put him on. And I ain't from Atlanta, but I can say Atlanta put him on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Talk to us about nah, 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 nah. put him on. <laughs> yeah. That's my ad libs. That's my shit. Yeah. Like, if you listen to our shit a lot, I, even just the way I sing so strongly, that's what made him go viral. Hmm. I'm telling him, bro, now you gotta use this aspect, my nigga. You know you little Mike, right? Like, yeah, like you gotta nigga, that's that's the best quality of your voice, you feel me? Like, if you go listen to the music that we got, if shit, like, you see that's the quality. I'm telling him, push like nigga, you gotta push that little Michael Jackson sound that you have. Don't cry. Like he used to be with that. <laughs> you feel me? You can tell the difference between when he write a song and when somebody else write a song because he say more. Yeah. You feel me? His songs is more repetitive. You feel me? Hmm. Like, but you can tell though, goddamn. Goddamn. I told him, like, you gotta use, you gotta use your strong points. And your strong point, nigga, you sound like a, a Michael Jackson rebirth. Like Jackson Five. Jackson Five. I always told that boy that. You feel me? Yeah. I'll leave that right there. That's on the phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Talk to us about this new project you just dropped. War at the War. I feel like War at the War is uh, one of my more, it sounds like, yeah, commercial. Like, it's simplified, but it's still hard. Like, it's like, yeah, it's more, it's more of a, yeah, I can do what you niggas do type thing. But I'm more of a lyricist, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, I like to actually. You see, even in that though, I kind of still have, not even kind of, I still held substance. I still kept like a certain, like when I'm talking about, if I'm talking about a broken heart, I'm talking about a broken heart. If I'm talking about what I'm going through, I'm talking about what I'm going through. Like, I'm talking about the ghetto, I'm gonna stay in the ghetto with it. You feel know I me? Mean? Like, so that's why I just, I, I really be trying to, like, that was just some straight to the point, but let me simplify it for you. You feel me? That's what that's what what the world was like coming from where I'm from. Uh, you know, we do shit by the world. Like I'm from the seven ward. Back right down the west side is supposed to be what I think they said the six or some shit like that. No, that's that's the six. That's not that's not what it's like, what, it's the first? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that shit go out here, but I know they do it by wards out here too. You feel mm-hmm. me? God damn. So Ward the Ward is everywhere I've been, cause you know, growing up in Florida, I'm plugged with all the zones too. You feel me? Like my partner Marley and all of them. We go to Tampa. They got Zo Block. You know, pull right up on Zo Block. I'm talking about how you, how you pull up on Zo Block. Got damn ten thousand dollars cash on the seat. I'm high as hell. 
Hey, at one point, I used to have a little problem with popping, tri popping triple C's. I don't know if you know what them shits is. But I used to have a little problem with popping them shits, man. God damn, I would pull up high as hell out of my mind. I'm so respected. Niggas be like, bro, you ain't put that shit away. You tripping, bro. Go home. You feel me? I'm tripping. I still sit on the block. Oh, wow. Whole bunch of niggas sitting around me locked up. I always been that nigga that just kind of just everybody kind of look to with some type of I don't know, like a light, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like a, a light, I don't know. People just everywhere I go, just people stay, I don't know, they just kind of how I look, my demeanor, or whatever, whatever, but I always had that light. So I never really had a problem with going places and having problems with niggas and shit like that, because I don't come off like that. I'm serious. I'm busting their head. But I ain't no gangster, I ain't no thug, I ain't no none of that. I just do what I need to do when I have to do it. Uh, even right now, you see this money. You see this money. You don't see the gun that come with this money. You feel me? Because I prefer not to show it. You feel me? Uh, that's how I go. So what's the single you're pushing off this project? Ghetto. It's not why I'm from. Wait, I said it's not about where I'm from, bitch. I was made in the ghetto. I always stayed in the ghetto. Got to sleep with one eye open, niggas. Hate in the ghetto. Can't get away from the ghetto. Don't know kid play wild around me, nigga got K's at 11. He bust your head for his ghetto, oh, oh. Steady hustling, niggas trying to get away from the ghetto. You trying to escape to the ghetto. I check that, man. Nino is N-I know for what I know. N-I apostrophe K and no speak with you or don't speak at all. Yeah. That's what that means, <laughs> Who are some of the producers you work with on this project? Oh, Nino. <laughs> Nino. You produce all that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. No time, no time to read, right? Yeah. And if I didn't produce that, I produced it because you can't say nothing about the motherfucking beat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that bitch is out now. So you got to reproduce that bitch in the same way I reproduce that bitch. Or it ain't changed, buddy. I'm just being honest. Man, you might have to cut that. <laughs> Don't. All right, we know your father. What has being a father taught you about life? Mm. It humbled me. Because me, before I had my first child at what? 18, 19. 18, 19. Goddamn. And I'm at seven now. Six baby mamas. You heard me. Six of them motherfuckers. God damn. It's okay. I ain't have my daddy. So I always wanted to be different in my kids' lives. You know what I mean? Like, they always going, like, I always just wanted to be different. You know what I mean? Just not having a daddy, it just make you uncle. I don't want my kid to grow up in that blank, with that blank stare. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a spot in your eye that's missing when you have a dad. You know what I mean? It's something that you don't have in you. So, me, I ain't never, not having a daddy, I always had to go around and not look for a daddy, but find things about men that I look up to, you feel me, and try to grab onto them traits and continue to move on in life, you feel me, seeing, especially seeing that growing up, I won't never, like, it's childhood friends that remember me, but I can't remember them because I won't never in one spot, you feel me? We always moved around and shit. After Katrina, we won't never in the same spot. You know what I mean? Man. So, being a dad, I, I just, I gotta, I gotta do everything my dad, I never experienced with my dad. You feel me? I only got one birthday gift. I never, I'm a junior. If you know my government, look my government up. I'm a junior. You know what I mean? But I ain't never met my daddy a day in my life. You feel me? And it's crazy because being a boy, you know, being a boy, you, you forget that shit, you feel me? You don't really look too much like, because me having seven kids and six baby mamas, I see how women is. You feel me? I see how women is. So goddamn, I just be like, I don't know certain things. And just be like, yeah. Uh, I don't understand this nigga missing 26 years. You feel me? But I even still not, but I talk to him. You feel me? I call him. FaceTime him and shit like that, but I ain't never seen him face to face. You feel know I me? Mean? But I don't understand, like, I, I can't understand you not, like, at least trying to fly out. My daddy got 
probably he say the same amount of kids that I do, but my mama say like twenty. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> for real. That's that, that, what it is. You feel me? Yeah, damn. And shit at my age, I got the same amount of kids my mama got. Do it was seven of us. I got seven kids. Yeah, you know I mean? damn. I just got. I got. I always got to be better than he was. You feel me? I got to. If if I miss a birthday, that shit that shit break me down. Like yeah, I cry about my kids. I'm everything about my kids. I'm I'm, I'm yeah. You feel me? I don't see how he could be that. I don't see how a nigga can be out here and not feel nothing about their kids. Everything I'm doing right now is for my kids. I'm making investments so they don't have to go through what I went through. Experience the shit I seen. Yeah, yeah, man. But even this little nigga, man. My little brother, but little nigga didn't live the life of a 30 year old nigga, me the same, vice versa, 40 year old nigga, man. I've seen more than 10 bodies before 18. Hmm. For real. For real. Not to mention everything else we done been through. I don't want my kids to experience that. My uncle took us out of school to hustle for that church. He t- I'm talking about, we ain't going to school. We ain't going to school. We ain't doing the, like we ain't going to school to hustle for a church. We getting beat. I'm talking about beat. Like I'm talking, I ass whoop to hustle for a church, a church <laughs> doing donations for a church. We missing school for donations for church. Man, I don't want my kids. Out. Yeah, basically. We we go out here and hustle up all this money. We ask my uncle, my uncle, my uncle, go. Can we go get the new J's and shit like that? We get man, we making two three thousand dollars in a day. You feel me? Two three thousand dollars in a day. We should be able to get whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> Our new playstations, whatever, yeah, whatever we want. Cadillacs. That nigga had Cadillacs sitting on dubs, all of this shit. But when we oh. ask for some. Goddamn, we'll go work for this shit and this nigga will turn around and go get hit a little bit. Like when we'll fuck up one time, I'll go to school and fall asleep in school the days they do allow us to go to school. Fuck around, fall asleep in school. You feel me? Come home, get an ass whooping for that because the teachers call us saying we sleeping through the classes and shit. You feel me? Man, what? The crib, man. Like, what? Me and this nigga right here. Shit. So when it comes to being a daddy, I don't want my kids out here looking for a daddy. I know I ain't with none of their mamas and shit like that, but uh, they ain't out here looking for a daddy either. I'm going to try. To, I got five kids in North Carolina, two in Atlanta. I'm going to make that drive like it's up the street. <laughs> Just like I find time to do everything else. You know, I, I don't understand why my daddy could. I can't leave that. Like I was a daddy to my brother, to my brothers. I mean, I was putting putting shoes on their feet at an early age. <laughs> Breaking in houses, what? Oh, oh, you got new shit. Yeah, let me get that. Right, yeah, it makes sense. An early age. First being me charge, I caught what I was about 13. <laughs> but before I was 18, I really got arrested probably like 17 times. Bond. I'm in mental house facilities. Goddamn, what, Holly Hill in uh, North Carolina? Oh, yeah, I got a rap sheet with them. I'm talking about starting riots and all of that. Goddamn, strategic behavior center, group homes and shit like that. All of this because I ain't have the guidance that I needed, man. I can't do that to my babies. That's a sensitive subject. My father ain't even take that long on that ear. But yeah, yeah. That's some push that shit for me and I be there for a day. All right. Any shout outs before we get you out of here? Ah, goddamn. Gotta shout out my brother, Naughty Not Nice. You hear me? That's his artist. Naughty Seven underscore. Gotta shout out my brother, King OFG. You hear me? Make sure that nigga put a nigga in the throat. So, yeah, he most definitely gotta be shouted out. You hear me? Long little joke. Don't let my brother Tyler, man. Long little wacko. Long live, live, Lawrence. Long live, Auntie Bert. I love you, Mama. Thank you for being my daddy. <laughs> you hear me? Real nigga shit. Uh, shout out my babies. 
Hey, shout out, shout out, man, everybody in Nino Corner, helping Nino make this shit happen. You know what I mean? There ain't too many people, so y'all know. You know who you are. Shout out GSM. You, you people. Yeah, you know I'm saying? Oh, yeah, shout out Big Worm. You know, I got a shout out Big Worm. You know what I'm saying? I got a shout out No Lack, even though I ain't fucking with No Lack right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And shout out this high tech I'm about to pour in my motherfucking Sprite while I'm driving. <laughs> All right. It's not about where I'm from, bitch, I was made in the ghetto Always made in the ghetto Gotta sleep with one eye open, niggas hate in the ghetto Can't get away